All right, so uh, I'm gonna bring in the stuff that I created in Painter, uh, in Painter, in 3D Modeler, and I'm gonna go to C plugin, FBX. Uh, you can do it from the normal import. I'm just used to do it this way. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and import the extra pieces. And Siri is gonna import them just as an FBX. Each piece is gonna come as its own subtool. And there we go. So these are the result from sampler, uh, from uh, sampler 3D modeler. All right, um, I'm gonna enable polyframe just to show you that, you know, it does, it, it does a pretty good job at, you know, generating the, the polygons. This is uh, a bit too dense, so we're gonna have to fix this, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of these meshes. Uh, I'll do it by hand really quickly. Uh, actually, I'm gonna merge them all together. This is just a quick, trick um, you can click on merge visible that's going to create a single subtool with all the meshes uh, but because they're all having their own uh, polygroup you can split them easily after so now i can copy this go to my mesh that has all my pieces this one right here right and i can go ahead and click on paste select it you see here are all my pieces i'm going to click on unify just for now you see, it makes them really small. Um, if you don't know what the Unify does, um, I'll cover it in a second, actually, because we have to do it anyway. But um, yeah, so now this is smaller. I can go ahead now and go to the split pan uh, panel here or palette and click on group split. So group split is going to look at all the groups that I have and it's going to split them. For this, I need to make sure that every single object has a different polygroup or a group, uh, and it doesn't have multiple polygroups within it. Otherwise, it's going to split it into parts. So in other words, uh, I need to make sure that my, my objects don't look like this yellow and green one, because this is a single object, but it has two groups. So if I split groups, it's going to you know, split that apart. So I just want to run an auto group just to be safe. And in case you don't know what our auto group is, you can go to the polygroup panel here. Poly, 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 poly groups and click on auto groups. That's basically what I'm doing is just assigning a random group. And now I'm going to click on group split and click OK. This is an undoable operation. All right. So now I have a bunch of objects. If I go down with my arrow keys, that's all the objects that I have. Cool. So we are ready to build our, um, our kit and start actually playing around with the building the chaos. That's what I call uh, building the chaos uh, before we start designing. So it's going to be uh, really fun, but let's go ahead and take it one step at a time. Hopefully uh, so far you have had a chance to um, create your own kit, uh, but if you haven't, uh, you can use my kit if you don't have time to build your own and still progress in the workshop for tomorrow. So um, let's go ahead and get out of Solomon so that we see all the bits and pieces. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure everything is within that um, scale that ZBrush likes to work with. And that scale is a two by two by two units. ZBrush works with, with units that are just generic units. So a unit of three, uh, four or whatever. Um, it doesn't mean that it's centimeters or millimeters. It doesn't matter. It just works with units. And that's kind of like one of the cool things. It's just generic so that um, if you want to export it at you know, if you want these pieces to be two meters, uh, you just need to set it as two units. And then when you export, you say those two units equates to uh, two meters or two centimeters or, you know, for whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, so we just need to make sure that those um, those units are two by two by two. It doesn't have to be that um, that precise or, or it doesn't have to be like always two by two by two. It's just that if you have something way too big or way too small compared to that um, scale that Sirius likes to work with, things like the brushes might look um, a little bit weird, right? So sometimes, I don't know if you've experienced that you bring in an object, maybe like a humanoid character, you bring it in and then you use your move brush and you go to all the way to the, the largest size and it's just tiny and you cannot go larger than that. That is because ZBrush is using the brush system uses that sort of two by two units. So all that rant is just to say that we can go to the unify uh, here in the deformation palette, this button right here that says unify. Um, so I already have it in my UI. So that's, I just wanted to show you where it is. Uh, this is my unify button. And all I'm gonna go, all I'm gonna do is gonna go to the top one of my sub tool list. And I'm gonna click unify. And then I'm also going to use my arrow keys in my keyboard to go down and then press unify. So I'm going to do down, unify, down, unify. So, you know, it's a manual process, but it just is pretty quick. Okay. So now I have unified everything. Let me just check that one. Yep. Um, so you see everything in here 
fits within that sort of two by two. Now I'm going to show you what that two by two actually means. I'm going to um, append something, doesn't matter what it is, this thing right here. And I'm going to click on a Q cube. A Q cube is a quick cube and I'm going to unify it, right? And now I'm going to show you the transparency and you see all of my pieces fit within that two by two cube, right? So that's, those, uh, that's the idea, okay? That everything in your in your kit that you're building should actually be uh, within those two by two. Again, it's not, um, it's not like a make or break rule that if you decide to make it larger or smaller is going to work, but um, this is one of the things that allowed for consistency.